So my name is Christian Steinburn, and I'm currently a digital nomad out here in Bali. And I'm working on with uh, as a freelance on my own uh, company called Stein Designs, where I primarily do architectural visualizations, but I also do a little bit of 3D modeling and motion graphics as well. So basically, what Digital Nomad is out in Bali is so primarily we're we're working online and remotely, and a lot of people here are working freelance. So you have a bunch of different kind of um, uh, careers out here. So you have a lot of people doing business. Um, a lot of online teachers, uh, graphic designers, all sorts of people out here, and a lot of cryptos, <laughs> a lot of crypto heads. <laughs> so basically what I made was a small device called EasyCoil, and the main function of it primarily was to uh, stop Christmas tree lights from tangling. So say when you stored them away, uh, you'd, you'd uh, wind them around this piece of uh, equipment called EasyCoil, and you'd storm away and then the following year when you take them out it's simply just unwinding it around the tree and up and easy uh, instead of the usual detangling the lights spending hours doing that it's done in a minute just throwing them straight up and then it's, just, it's primarily a storage unit that takes the hassle out of putting up the Christmas tree lights well, Growing up I always kind of had a bit of a creative aspect in myself like I always knew I wanted to work in something where I was either creating or manufacturing or something like that. So I always kind of, or I'm just doing something just a bit kind of unique and different. Like I always kind of had a, an attraction for architecture and game design and all these different things. But I always also had a slight bit of a, an ambition to kind of do more than just simply architecture. I always wanted to kind of, if I was in architecture, I wanted to be leading it. I didn't want to be, you know, doing out the small bits. I wanted to be at the top designing. So in the sense, I always kind of wanted to run my own little company and doing the, the main stuff in the siding and coming up with the, the concept that we're going with. I'll have to say no to that one now, myself. I, I just, I, it just doesn't taste well for me at all. John, I was only thinking about today, but um, it's, uh, if there was something for keeping your level while out here in Bali is what I've noticed it, is something that keeps your eye on your hydration levels, because out here, uh, mosquitoes and dehydration are your biggest enemies because you spend so much time in the sun and this pure humidity out here is something else altogether. Um, I say definitely definitely take part in it anyway, that's the first thing because you get such a great experience doing it. I can still think back to it as one of the best experiences I've ever had. Um, uh, that the other thing is to put in as much effort as you can because for what I found for it anyway was that You'll get a lot more out of it the more you put into it. And um, definitely just have fun with it at the end of the day. Like it's kind of something you're going to be making it yourself. Uh, you're coming up with an idea for a, a product or a service or whatever it is. So definitely just have fun with it at the end of the day. And that you'll get far by just having fun with it and really kind of getting yourself involved with the creative design and the entrepreneurial aspects of everything. That's such a tough one. Because there's just so many great ones out there. Like, when you take a look at the likes of, like, Bill Gates or Steve Jobs, like, they were just phenomenal at what they did. And they're, like, beyond anything, like, if you look at Steve Jobs, his marketing is just next level. Like, when you think that an iPhone and an Android phone, at the end of the day, their core app concepts are to make phone calls and text. But there's such a difference just from the marketing he made, from the extra features. Like, it's just, they're just in two different leagues altogether. And then there's, like, Jeff Bezos, like, I mean... To think he made Amazon is basically an online shop and such a simple concept. Like, I mean, how could you? Like, how could you not? Like, it's such a simple thing that when you think of it now, it's like, that's so simple. Why didn't you think of it? But sure, isn't he the only one out there making the millions off it? Like, I think the biggest fear is definitely kind of like underperforming for, like, say, if you're for, your, for a client, say, in my, in my case, if you don't kind of keep your standards up and if by the end of the trans transaction that they're not happy with the product that you're getting or the service that they're receiving like it just it doesn't bode well for you in the future like that's just and it's just putting yourself down at the end of the day like i think having a good standard is the most important thing like you want to at the end of the thing when you produce your service or product whatever client you have you want them to be happy with the standard of it or above or just have gone above and beyond and have them delighted with it that's in my opinion um, I'd say creativity, definitely. 
uh, like to do anything, you have to have a, a, an outlook that when you're looking at a product, you're not simply seeing it as why everything else is out there. It's not so much how is it similar, but how is it different to everything else. So you really need that kind of creative outlook. Um, also, having this kind of like confidence in your ability to talk to people, like that's one of the biggest things I find is kind of that when you're having a conversation with a client or whatever, that you're kind of instilling confidence in them with what you're saying, that they're comfortable with you doing whatever work it is, whatever, providing whatever service, they have confidence in you and they're comfortable with you coming with different ideas that they might have not have originally planned for. I think those are two really big ones. And then just determination. Like you have to, you really have to have determination to kind of see a product or like even when I was doing it, to, to see something true is such a key quality. They're not like, it's something that you can build up. It's just, it's just such a key component for an entrepreneur is just to have the determination to see something true to the end. Strangest thing. I think it was back when actually I was the, doing all the 16, I was a student and just, I think it was just at the height of, you know, all the enterprise stuff. Uh, I can't, primar it was, um, I was asked to do a guest lecturing at a college and it was like, now I, from what I remember, it was just a very small class that ended up being, but I remember thinking in my head, like when you're 16 at that age and you're being told like, that these, you're coming to do a lecture for all these college students, and you're thinking in your head, surely they know more than me at this, you know, at the end of the day, I'm just, I'll just look like an idiot, going up and talking about business to all these people that have wealth of information, academically and everything beyond me. But uh, no, it was a great old experience, but it was, the, the beforehand of it was the strangest feeling ever. The, t the, the thought of going in and lecturing people that were twice my age was just, it was the most strangest thing I've ever thought of doing. Um, I would say just kind of like I'll just go back to the you know having the confidence when you're talking to someone. Like when I was doing the Christmas markets and everything back when I was selling my product, you really kind of were trying to get just conversations with people going and just kind of getting them comfortable. Not even so much that you're trying to sell them it, but just you're just kind of talking about the product to them and you're just it's more of a conversation you'd have with a friend, you know, just talk to them about it. And you know, some people might be walking by, they might see you chatting, they might come over, take a look. But um, really, just kind of, kind of building a kind of bit of rapport between you and the consumer is one of the biggest things, in my opinion. Just having it as a comfortable that they're not feeling like they're they're being hounded to buy anything, but it just feels like a comfortable conversation that they can just come over, have a few questions. They don't necessarily have to buy anything, but just the comfort and you know the openness that they feel for coming over and just having a conversation with you. Uh, for the best parts, I'd say it's definitely the sense of achievement from like say if you make a product, like just seeing something from start to finish, the sense of achievement is just, it's just indescribable. Like it's just, it's just such an insane concept to think that something that was simply stuck in your head is now uh, a product in front of you or a service or you're, you're the head of something, do you know? It's just, it's just such a phenomenal feeling. And then the cons are it'll either sell or it won't. And when it doesn't sell, it's, it can knock you down a bit, but you learn from it and you move on. How could you not, really, at the end of the day? Um, I think my worst thing was, and I was, thankfully, I learned it when I was young, but um, I'd gone in to do a presentation or whatever it was, but I had it in my head as a script. You know, I was going to read it word for word in my head. And on the day, I don't know, whatever happened, didn't I just go completely blank in the thing? And I was just kind of left mumbling a bit. You know, and sure, well, like, in hindsight now, it taught me a great lesson, you know, don't go in with a script, have your points and kind of cover your points and talk about them. But uh, when you go in with a script, you're, you're kind of asking for trouble a little bit because the moment it goes off plan a bit, sure, you'll, you'll throw yourself into a panic and forget the entire thing altogether. And then you're, then you're just kind of throwing out any old bit of words to <laughs> try and grab a bit of attention. Definitely, I think, having trust in your partners in a sense that you know what their strengths are, you know what their weaknesses is. Uh, there's a good communication between you that you can all help support each other when you're, when you're, um, say, you might not be a jack of all trades, you might be weak in design, but great in communications. And then the next person might be the, the opposite of you. They might be great design, not brilliant at communications, but together you're covering both flaws. And I think that's the key thing, just having trust in your coworkers and then the communication and uh, that you can communicate what you need to be done, what needs to be done, there's no issues. And then the trust in the sense that you both will carry your weight and you're not, you're not 
going to be left down by the other person. So I think those are kind of the, the key components for teamwork in a business. Uh, definitely know your consumers. Like, um, in the sense, say if you were marketing something to the younger generation, um, like Facebook, Instagram, they're the key ways. You'll get like hundreds of uh, views on an advertisement in comparison to, say, if you're trying to do it for an older people. You're better off using word of mouth, television, newspapers. Just, you just know your market and then you'll know better how to advertise towards them. I still think to this day it was um, Dragon's Den. I think that was, like even looking back on it, the thought of being up there again was just, it was just surreal, to be honest. Because like, I remember watching it as a child and going, or even not even as a child, or that same year, you be watching the, the adult version, you're like, God, could you imagine being up there and going, oh, that was a good idea. And then to be up there then, it was just, it was just surreal. Like, I, I couldn't explain just the sense of being up there and looking at them and going up and down the stairs like you see on the show and everything. It was just, it was just surreal. Um, I suppose the main thing is to not get tunnel vision on your first idea. Like, I think that happens to so many people that they think that this is the be-all, end-all design or the idea and they stick with it. Whereas if you keep coming up with ideas, you keep generating new ideas, coming up with new concepts. You can keep, you can stick with your main overall concept, but like change design or change aspects of it and then keep, just keep generating them and then come back to them and see what works, see what doesn't work. And at the end of the day, hopefully you'll have a, a good product or a service. I'd say there's a lot of um, family and friends I could pick, but I think if you're on a desert island, I'd nearly be choosing between do you know who I'd pick is Gordon Ramsay and Jamie Oliver? Because I'd say at least you'll get a decent meal every night. And if one of them loses the head, I could imagine Gordon Ramsay losing the head. That's something I'd pay to see on an island with Jamie Oliver. Like if he lost his head at Jamie Oliver, I'd be paying front row seats to see that on an island. <laughs> I'd say the main thing is uh, to not kind of take it all on yourself. Like I remember when I started off my thing when I was 16, I did it by myself and I kind of had this idea and this kind of notion in my head that, oh, I have to do all this myself, now I can't rely on it. And you know, I, I wasn't going to be asking for help, I was going to try and get it all done myself. Whereas in hindsight, asking for help is the best thing you can do. You know, you're not going to be an expert at everything. Definitely lean on people, kind of create a bit of a support network for yourself, especially for students that are going off doing the enterprise. Definitely have people they can go and ask because people are only, only delighted to help you when you're that age. And, they can just see your uh, enjoyment of the, of the experience. Like, definitely don't be afraid to ask for help. Definitely, I think, taking the, the chances on some of the concepts we've done or even client work, you know, just really just don't be afraid to put yourself out there. You know, like, you might not, you might feel a bit like, like a, an imposter syndrome, but definitely just to kind of go for it and put yourself out there. So, nothing ventured, nothing gained. And then the worst was, um, uh, I don't know, to be honest. I suppose um, I had bought a few things there once now. This was, uh, this was a talk about like a real kind of um, uh, a cowboy job I was trying to do with just a small bit during the lockdown. I bought uh, frames and my girlfriend's a graphic designer, so I thought, oh, well, maybe I might be able to make a bit of, you know, let her have a few pictures designed, you know, kind of like custom pictures. I do the frames for them. And I'd say those frames are still sitting in my bedroom now, haven't been touched once at all <laughs> since it. I didn't really, I didn't, I think it was just kind of a spur of the moment. I kind of said, oh yeah, definitely, this will sell now. She was selling, she was able to sell um, the pictures there. And I was like, oh, geez, wouldn't people love them if they were in a frame, purely decorated, straight to go up on the wall. And uh, no, no it, didn't, it didn't go well at all. <laughs>